Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earthmaster out here about 1044, 1041 p.m. California time, May 29th, 2024. Uh, latest activity looks like a 1.3 into the region of Alaska. I'll get to this earthquake activity here in just a little bit. Still looking at uh, some continuous fountaining of lava out here across the Iceland area where we did see an eruption take place earlier today. It's been ongoing for quite a while, and um, it's going to be interesting to watch here because things are um, relatively, uh, they've had a long duration here of inflation across the area, and I'm kind of curious to see if this one will die off pretty quickly or if we're just going to see a, another month or two long uh, continuous eruption here. Uh, the latest update put out here, look at that beautiful, absolutely beautiful image. I'm going to get this up here a little bit. Um, this was earlier, I think, when it was at its fullest in terms of the fissure remaining the most active. Uh, the main part of the crater it looks like about 2.4 kilometers long, and there has been uh, a little bit of uh, mag or lava uh, hitting the defense walls to the west of the Grindav uh, Grindavar Grindavik area and uh, just north east of Grindavik. Wait a minute, let's see here. Some of the lava flow that goes to the south goes into a crack to meet Hagafell and comes up again just north of the ramparts northeast of Grindavik. A little bit of uh, confusion there in the wording, uh, which flows to the west, goes north of Slingerfell and approaches. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's a hard one to read there with this translation. But uh, either way, um, it does look like uh, most of the uh, model calculations here have put about 14 million uh, cubic meters of magma has passed, has uh, depleted from the Savart Singhi area. Uh, the rates of deformation has decreased considerably, but magma continues to flow from the magma accumulation underneath the Savart Singhi into the crater area. So um, obviously still uh, something to watch here. Um, their latest map here shows that this is all in uh, Icelandic here. But, uh, you know, the main area, of course, is going to be back over here where the crater area is, as you can see in that dashed line. Now, it looks like, um, let's see here, there's some older magma flows here. I wonder if they've added the new one on here yet. Kind of hard to tell. I'll have to look at the English version here and uh, get a little bit better view of it. But uh, it does look like it's shrinking, though, in terms of the length of the fissure. So we should see things potentially die down overnight. Uh, in terms of this, uh, you know, the volume that's being put out here. Uh, fissure extends south of Hagefell and lava flows uh, from the there mostly to the south and west. Lava has flowed over to meet this area. So anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a little hard to read some of that uh, activity, but obviously things are still, uh, you know, kicking up there as that live stream shows. As uh, far as any unusual earthquake activity, let's see what we got. <clears throat> um, 12 hours, 61 earthquakes out here. Very small earthquakes. Looks like it's mainly around the area of interest. Uh, a little bit down here across the Grindavik area, but goodness, you know, that uh, area has seen a lot, a lot of earthquake activity right up. Uh, prior to the eruption taking place, there was hundreds of earthquakes stirring up out here in this area. Uh, just definitely glad that it didn't stir up further south here into the Grindavik area. Um, so for now, we're def definitely looking at the uh, activity up north there, right around the Hagefell area northward. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here for earthquake activity. Anything major going on here? Uh, last largest quake here of the day. 
Looks to be only a 5.4, 380 kilometers deep here into the Izu Trench. No six-pointers here in the last 24 hours. Uh, Taiwan seeing a little bit of earthquake activity here. We're going to have to watch that, see if we don't get uh, a little bit of swarming going on here again. This area, you know, obviously under some extreme pressure here recently. I uh, got two earthquakes in the last few hours or so, 4.7 and 4.8 in that swarming area that we've seen earlier this month and during the month of April. Further out and about here, not a whole lot happening down across the Vanuatu area. Looks like a 5.2, fairly recent. New Zealand, pretty quiet. Um, really not seeing too much in, in the uh, terms of large-scale activity here across the globe. Hawaii, I don't know what happened out here, but not showing any earthquakes here on the map. Uh, but I'm sure there has to be some, right? Only eight. Only eight earthquakes here. And um, look like they're all under 2.5. Not a whole lot of uh, changes going on there across that volcano for now. Of course, we are still at a highest, you know, one of the highest levels since 2018, since the 2018 eruption. But what's, you know, the question is, what's going on here? What's taking it so long? Are we looking at maybe a, another magma intrusion somewhere or is this going to be it for a little bit? Um, the deformation chart out here shows that we're back on the uptick here in terms of inflation. But not quite, and you know, we're just about at the same level as our previous inflation level there a few days ago. Uh, but this should, yeah, it should look, it looks like it's just barely above it. Should kick up here a little bit. And uh, it's just, it's a waiting game here. Definitely a waiting game. And there's really no sign of uh, any imminent eruption. The latest update that was put out this morning here states that uh, the volcano is not erupting. And um, the unrest, the earthquake activity continued underneath the summit um, over the past day. Uh, but there's still a little bit of questioning going on, right? Whether this activity will lead to an intrusion or an eruption or simply continue as seismic unrest at depth. We'll watch this and, of course, report back on it when things uh, decide to pick up or do something else in, other than what it's doing right now. All right, California here, not a whole lot happening down in, in the uh, California area. Minimal small microquake activity. If we look at the 2.5 map and above, well, that pretty much removes all the earthquakes out here along the West Coast. Texas still seeing some activity out here. Uh, Oklahoma, one earthquake down in or into the uh, New Madrid seismic zone. Got to watch that. Uh, as I mentioned last night, most of the activity here across these oil fields indicate pressure out here across the interior of the North American plate and these are the areas to watch uh, New Madrid seismic zone and up here across the East Coast but we're not really seeing anything yet um, there into the uh, New Zealand or uh, not New Zealand <laughs> New Jersey area uh, but we'll continue to watch that region here uh, Yellowstone National Park let's just double check that here I'm a little bit cold in here got to turn down the AC here a little bit or turn it up it's quite chilly here in the computer room but I got to keep all this stuff cool while it's hot outside uh, earthquake activity there's a wind event here from earlier still haven't got around to figuring out what this reading is well it looks like um, that's already off the chart there was an odd reading here from yesterday that kind of looked like I don't know what it was some type of magma flow maybe it looks like but hard to say it may have just been some type of outside interference but we'll look for that see if that stirs up again but as far as earthquake activity goes there's really not a whole lot going on here the pitchstone plateau showing some very small earthquakes but that's about it so space weather you know it does look like we may be getting a glancing hit from that large long duration x flare here recently let me go to the um, official site and see what they have here um right here let's put this into motion and let's see what we got so of course this is on the 28th we did have that long duration x flare this morning there it is earth in the green looks like we're just barely going to get a clipper of that large eruption that took place there on the um, southeastern limb of the sun from 
former Sunspot 3664. Here's Earth once again. There's that CME that was produced. Uh, it does look, you know, like we may get uh, a little bit. Uh, some elevated speed and uh, some decent plasma density. Not a huge hit. This ain't going to be any type of uh, historic aurora event. But it does look like they are forecasting a potential G2 class storm here. Uh, beginning on the 31st UTC time. I see Kevin has uh, updated this little layout. I like it. Looks nice. Um, May 31st UTC time, roughly beginning about 15 to 1800. So right now the current UTC time is uh, 0552 on the 30th. Uh, so technically that would be... Sometime on, I'm trying to think when that would be, Wednesday, Thursday, sometime on the, on the day on Friday, I think. We'll have to watch that, check back on these time frames. A um, little uncertain, though, on if this is going to be at nighttime or during the day. Um, is that right, 0554? Yes, 0552, 0554, close enough. Um, so yeah, definitely does look like things may be stirring up out here with the KP index of roughly around um, six. I like that. Pretty neat. G1 storm, G2 category right here. G3 in the red. Looks pretty neat. Um, oh, I see. He has added the Aurora forecast as well. I like the integration here that solarham.com has picked up here. I, first time actually looking at it, showing the uh, phases here of the moon as well. This is pretty neat, pretty nifty there, Kevin. I do like it. Um, so we'll uh, have to check back on the arrival. But here's tonight's forecast. Obviously not a whole lot. Here's tomorrow night's, right? Um so it looks like it may be sometime on Friday, maybe Friday night. We'll have to check back on that. All right, let's see what we got here for flaring activity. There's that sunspot, 3697, the source of that large X flare here recently, long duration one. And of course, its former self, 3664, produced many, many X flares in all that historic aurora event last time it was out here on the earth facing side of the sun so it's gone a whole loop around the far side of the sun and still remains quite active there's still uh, de definitely some decent chances in here of seeing some further stronger flaring up here um the sunspot looks like it's going through a little different phase here or maybe reorganization uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, but either way, our flaring threat remains elevated here at a 35% chance for an X flare. There's that long duration event. That was a huge flare. And uh, again, it looks like we may just be getting a little glip, a glimpse of it here in a couple days. We'll see what the auroras, see how, see how the aurora stir up there from that uh, incoming CME. All right, so 35% chance for X flare, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance, and proton event getting up there as well uh, with all this flaring activity going on at 20%. No major roars right now uh, happening on, on the Aurora forecast, but again, we'll watch for this maybe on Friday night. Look at those magnetic loops right here. I still think this one poses more of a hazard than this area up here. So definitely keep an eye on that in the coming days. All right. Uh, whew, freezing in here. You guys going to start hearing me chattering. Ooh. All right. Um, slight risk going on here tonight. Looks like some tornado activity. 2% there in eastern Colorado. Uh, wind and some hail threats out there, it looks like. Uh, far as the day tomorrow for Thursday. Uh, pretty large area of severe weather in the slight risk category, 2% zone. The main threat is going to be some wind and, of course, Texas hail size. Uh, large hail out here across a good portion of uh, central Texas, it looks like. Maybe they'd call that west central Texas. Lubbock, Abilene, San Angelo, Big Spring, and Brownwood, Texas, all in the significant severe area. And you guys could see 
Uh, well, potentially 10% or greater of two-inch diameter hail flying out of the sky. So heads up for tomorrow. And um, following that, let's see what we got here. There's uh, the weekend. Still some more thunderstorms out here, it looks like, in the southern plains. But uh, it does look like things want to take a a little bit different turn uh, turn in terms of severe weather. There is a return of what looks like monsoonal moisture coming in here from Mexico into the desert southwest. High pressure over a portion of the Midwest out here. That should keep any severe weather threats at bay. June 10th, let's see, Sunday, that's Monday. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Um, I'm really not seeing anything major in terms of any significant tornado threats out here, as far as the setup goes. But we'll definitely continue to keep an eye on that. Those guys definitely need a break out there, as far as the um, crazy weather here recently. All right, guys, seismograph stations look pretty quiet for now. Um, Earthquake 3D globe. It's it uh, looks like any given day, uh, any other given day out here. As far as trimmer count goes, still seeing some elevated trimmer out here. Almost 400 epicenters of trimmer, mainly at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So it's been like that pretty much all week uh, at a decent amount. So we're coming up here on 2,835 epicenters of trimmer. Again, most of it does look like it's stirring up here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So keep an eye on that. Obviously, this area is under quite a bit of strain. There's one little interesting earthquake here just prior to the Cascadia subduction zone uh, interface area here. This is where it starts to begin, where, where the plate begins to subduct. And uh, that earthquake, 9 kilometers for a 2.4. So we'll keep an eye on it. Southern Cal I mean, uh, Northern California here looks like they could be seeing some activity here soon with all the... the um, um, Divergent activity out here recently across this oceanic rift zone. Seen a lot out here in the last 30 days. I don't know what it's been, but uh, definitely a good size. Uh, this is just 2.5 and above, but um, it's been quite a bit. A little trail of activity extending here to Northern California as well. So we'll watch this area uh, here closely for some potential further movement. In the meantime, folks, uh, have a good night. And we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the uh, Thursday morning update. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.